Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's I, Piece of Geekish, and today I'm back with another Kerbal Space Program video, and today we're gonna I'm gonna make a tutorial on uh, how to play Kerbal Space Program in general, which means I'm going to go through lists of uh, ways to succeed in this game and conquer your conquest of space, venture yourself to other planets and moons, and basically dominate the Kerbal system. And uh, we're gonna do just that, but um, I do have other videos in my uh, about um, how to conquer space, like how to orbit, and uh, basically um, how to land on moons and all that. So, uh, but I guess starting fresh won't hurt. Um, but I'm not gonna get rid of the other videos. But uh, I'm just gonna make a minor update towards them, making some tweaks. And uh, this tutorial, though, it's gonna be easier. This uh, list, these uh, series of tutorials, are gonna be easier than the. Um, other tutorials I made about Kerbal Space Program. Alright, so, um... Oh, I had that already. Oh. Um, so, basically, uh, we're gonna be uh, making a new sandbox game, and uh, we're gonna start fresh here. And so, okay, so first, we all know the basic areas of, and aspects of this game. This is the VAB, Space Plane Hangar, the Astronaut Complex, Research and Development Center, I mean, facility or research development R and D facility. You might not be needing that in sandbox, but you do need in career mode. Tracking station and launch pad. Okay, now astronaut complex. My recommendation is getting as all the astronauts you can for the first group. Okay, and then um, basically creating your rocket and blasting it off. But today we're going to be learning how to create a basic rocket that will get you into some sort of orbital trajectory or close to that, and it. Uh, it requires either size, small or large, and uh, today, I guess, it won't hurt to do with small rockets. But, uh, large rockets, it's not hard to operate with, but I guess it won't hurt. Okay, so we're gonna be using the, uh, Mark 1-2 command pod, the huge-ass ones. Uh, it doesn't hurt, trust me. Okay, so, firstly, um, we need a decoupler, which is, uh, this pan, we need the Rokomax gigantic decoupler. We don't need the stack decoupler, the stack ones over the tiny ones. But, uh, the brand decouplers, the Rokomaxes, are the ones that we need. Okay, and then we need stack fuel under it. And, uh, how much fuel do we need? Just, just enough to command ourselves, or to maneuver ourselves around orbit, orbit, or any space mission that we are in. But for this one, we're gonna be, like, uh... Standard Apolloized capsule and uh, missionary thing. So all we need is just a normal Rokomax X200-32 fuel tank, or the big, the biggie. Now we're not talking about the external fuel tank that the shuttle uses, we're just gonna use the tiny one. Tiny, kinda lengthy, gray. Or you could replace that with um, the Rokomax X200 regular, you know. It's half of the size and that's half, half of the quantity that the, um, the actual huge Rokomax tank does, but the, the medium half-size one is good for compact missions and all that. But, in that case, it's only when, you might need it only when you're doing like, you know, like small operations or uh, you're probably uh, having problem with weight, you might want to line the lady up, so that's a good option. The next thing we need is a nozzle, where the hot gas release will be released. <laughs> uh, that was weird. And, uh, there are quite the variety of nozzle we can choose, or the um, the um, engine, if you'd like to call it the engine, I like to call it a nozzle. Right. The mainsail is unnecessary because we all know what the mainsail is for. I'm not sure. I don't think it has a it doesn't have a very good ISP in vacuum, so that's out of the window. Um, my recommendation is either to use the skipper. Or the uh, poodle liquid engine. I'm not. I'm talking about the big poodle liquid engine here that fits here. But uh, in this case, it won't hurt to use the skipper because we having a big engine. I mean, a big tank, and we need a bigger nozzle to uh, inject all that fuel and turn it into a bigger thrust amount. Because the poodle, it won't do much, especially when it says that it has only max power of 220 instead of the uh, one, not 1,500, 650. That's right. Okay, so pretty much we're done and over with with the um, command module and the service module. It's time to put another decoupler, and we all know what kind of decoupler to use, the Rokomax. And it, auto it automatically gives a fairing for it, which is the cool part of 0.17 update, 
it's quite a while now, but it's still a cool feature. And um, next we need the uh, boosting stage. Or the boosting stage is the actual stage that's gonna lift your rocket up into space. And uh, you might need to use the service module to boost it up into orbit if you if necessary. Otherwise, you can make like kind of like a Saturn V-ish kind of rocket. The S one the S one C is gonna take you like upper atmosphere, and then the S two um. Uh, S2 stage will probably get you um, boost yourself up into like a reasonable altitude up in space. S4B will lead you into orbit, kind of like that. But I prefer mine to be a little shorter. Uh, so we might need to have one of these uh, huge Rocomax jumbo things. But trust me, these things overheat fast. Hence why I add something that's on the bottom like these. But uh, it may cause a little bit of a stability problem. Um, it may happen from time to time. But uh, yeah, it works though. That's why my recommendation is to put something like these. Um, it's more stable for some reason. I try using the X200. It just keeps wobbling every time when I throttle up 100%. And uh, next thing is these thing. The um, the main tank itself won't be able to lift the um, the whole command module and its weight itself to space. And you can't expect the um, service module to do the rest of the job. That's why we have side boosters or SRBs, or you can have them all in liquid. It doesn't matter which way. All you need is, um, all you need is a radial decoupler or a side um, attachment thingies on your side. Kind of like these are radial decouplers. Yes, that's the word. And um, for the big rockets, I guess it wouldn't hurt to use any of these, really. I don't really care which one I use, as long as they all work. I prefer four. Two is an alright number. It's a stable. Three, I don't know about that. Depends. But four is recommended for sure. And no, we are not going to use the tiny little back fuel boosters, kind of like the Ares. We're not going to use these. We're going to use something more efficient, liquid fuel. Now, this is this is Kerbal Space Program. You don't have to worry about any um, combustion instability with any of these huge fuel tanks. It's not like freaking going to blow up or anything unless you really fucked up badly. <laughs> So you could use the, the smaller engines and stack them hard, or you could just use the large engines and do it safe. Now, in my opinion, I prefer using the medium, the half size engines, and uh, probably not too many of these because uh, we might not need many. Uh, let's see. Um, there we go. Uh, we might need about three of these. Three of these stacked, I guess. There we go. But, um... And now we need our nozzle for all of these. And uh, the main, um, the main engine here, the the kind of like the uh, shuttle booster tank. I mean, liquid um, ah, external tank. We'll use the mainsail. But for the boosters, we might use the uh, um, the skipper here. Uh, but we could choose the skipper, or we can use the mainsail again, which is kind of my recommendation because I always love the mainsail. But uh, all right. That's not the only things we have to worry about. Okay, so our rocket is set and ready to go besides a few aspects, like the parachute, the recovery system, and stability. Aha! It's not like, I mean, by stability, we don't need to add fins or anything. We've got thrust vectoring with these babies, so don't even worry. Um, <clears throat> what I mean by stability is that um, these things won't collapse upon launch, because these things tend to wobble time to time during launch. In the high-powered launch because there's nothing that is supporting the structure hence why I will be adding struts it's called the EAS-4 strut connector now you should attach these about in the bottom kind of part of the rocket since that's the place where it tends to wobble a lot and make sure you set your symmetry mode up to 4 so it equalizes all of that and uh, you should know about the symmetry system before you watch this tutorial because I don't want you guys crying to me about oh, I use the symmetry system <laughs> I'm like no just no all right um it's kind of hard to get these things to kind of oh got it right okay there we go and just check all four sides if it's all correct you are go but one more thing you also need to connect struts between both of these things so you don't want anything collapsing kind of like that yep Houston, we are go. All right, boosters are go. And uh, what else do we need? Oh yeah, the parachute. And remind me, this thing can um, go at least up to the moon, I assume. Uh, considering the fact that these are huge ass engines. 
Oh, by the way, we can also have multiple, um, we have multiple choices of parachutes, besides the small one. Um, we have the radial detachment chute, which is the side parachutes. Um, very useful if you're gonna have a docking port on top. Uh, normal parachutes, which is kind of like old-fashioned style, the old school. Or, you can have the, um, the, um, you know, the Mark 25 parachute. It's not as big as this one, so... I, this gives you less. This gives you less. Um, but does it give you drag? Still drag. Uh, I guess it gives you um, a same amount of drag, except it deploys fully at um different altitudes, and uh, oh, the deployment rate is also different. Oh, I see. I see. Don't worry. Okay, so my recommendation, if you're gonna dock with some spacecraft, my bet is that you would want to use the um the normal old-fashioned parachute, but uh. I don't want nothing too big, so I'm gonna use the regular like a parachute. I'm sorry. Okay, and things that are new, science experiments, I don't think they, we might be needing that anytime sooner. Um, next thing for sure is the um, to check, make final inspections, like a visual inspection. <clears throat> That's what I mean, visual inspection. And don't forget about the staging system. Now, the staging system is here for a purpose. Now, some people's gonna be all like, Bull shit! This thing is useless. There's no use for the staging system. Everything's gonna be right, right? Uh, no, not always. When it comes to complex operation, it will, you know, screw up time to time. And this is why it's here. So it'll manually let us, you know, kind of inspect it and see where it's all at. It'll highlight it when you um reach to its kind of state right there. So put it here. Here's one of our flaws right now. We have. The main engine is not going to burn until these four engines stop, which is what I don't want. I want all of these engines to fire at the same time. But I will stop it time to time to make sure that we conserve fuel for the main tank. But, uh, yeah. Or it's your choice, because these four boosters can lift these all this freaking rocket, the whole thing up, and probably reach you about 10 kilometers. I've done this before. This is like my standard purpose, multi-purpose rocket here. And, um, yeah, for more stability, I would recommend, um, having all and thrusting at the same time, I guess. And, uh, yeah. But, for now, I guess we'll conserve that fuel. And, uh, next thing is, that we're forgetting, is SAS. Alright, now, SAS is not such a big thing to handle, but it's nothing that the rocket can't handle. It is a necessity to have SAS at all costs. And I mean, a necessity. You might place it on each stage of the rocket, which is important because the rocket needs its own computer guiding system to make sure that your shit doesn't go out of control and now you're going to be complaining on why this thing ain't going to space. It's because you don't have SAS and you're having problem with stability. That's why. Tail rotors, that's just the mod. Don't put that there. Uh, I don't think we might need to talk about anything else. RCS thrusters are um, optional. They uh, are useful for huge spacecraft in uh, space for maneuverability, and um, pretty much that's all the SAS uses for, huge spacecraft and maneuverability, and that's it. Um, uh, I don't think I have anything else to go over with before this, and now we can just test our rocket out. But first, let's check on our crew. No, 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 we're not going to send all of them, actually. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, just to let you know, if you guys are playing this in career mode, you want to make sure that you have some sort of, like, um, an abort system. Because if you don't have an abort system, I don't know, bro. You, you pretty much fucked either way. Because um, um, if the rocket goes AWOL, you really want something to abort, do you? Oh, and one thing for sure is you, need, um, you might need um, a uh, um, solar panels. That's right, those are the words. Solar panels. I would go for the um, Paul, um, these like retracting panels or the stationary panels, but I like the retracting ones better. They're more maneuverable, and you have more, you know. I don't know. It just rotates, unlike the stationary one. It doesn't. So when you're in the, like the dark side of Kerbin or your rocket's not in the right way up, your thing, your solar panel's not gonna get enough energy, and it's just gonna freaking blow your whole spacecraft up. No energy, you know. So anything else, um, anything else you might add is um, optional from now on. Besides one thing, um, I forgot to mention about extra struts um, on the uh, the the booster tanks um, might want have struts connecting to its main engine or the um, service module or wherever you want to strut. I would say on the about the SAS, 
right beneath the decoupler, and this will provide more stability. And uh, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't have that much weight, so might as well just have all the safety on, and uh, not lose your pilots. All right, so um, untitled space grab. We shall call this the the um. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Elu Explorer I. I stands for one. And uh, as always, it's a very good day. You can save the craft and launch it. And there are checklists you might want to go over before launch. With you guys here. Alright, so. The very few checklists you guys want to be careful on is the, um, that you make sure that your rocket's stable and you go, okay, is it okay where we launch? Okay, is it alright? Um, okay, basically seeing if there's any problem visually and uh, making sure that your abort stage is right, um, stage in general. And uh, make sure that you turn on your SAS before launch, you throttle up by pressing shift and control, left control, Con left control, shift, and left shift, aw, oh, freaking left shift and left control, that's what I meant. And uh, my recommendation is not to put the throttle to 100% because this thing will screw you over. I would recommend about 66%. Alright. 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 So we're good. We're currently in 94. Um, oh, has the recover vessel as well, but that is not needed until you are in the end of the mission. You will not be able to recover the vessel until you are done. And that's an easier way, I just figured it out. I was like, ooh, 94 um, meters above the sea level, and I was like, oh, I'll recover the vessel. Alright, so let's do this. Alright, so SAS on, we are go. Crew, go. They all look happy, let's go. Alright, so let's start with 66%. We're ready to launch. Boosk! We have a stable flight so far. Crew reporting that it is, uh... Been a very nice ride, smooth ride, no vibration. I feel I, can, I feel kind of bad for Jebediah for having a shitty view, but uh, we're having a stable rate of 100 meters per second rising, and I think it's time to increase our throttle to 80 percent. Don't go straight 100 percent because you never know there could be something wrong. Just for safety's sake, until you know 100 percent that you've minimized all its risk factors. And it's best if you don't go too fast with the amount of mass that you have, because otherwise that'll be wasting fuel of pushing yourself through the atmosphere, because things like that tend to happen. Because it'll all it does is just, like, as you reach terminal velocity, you do not want to add extra freaking pressure onto yourself, because otherwise that's just a waste of fuel. Your spacecraft might collapse and all that stuff that you don't want happening. All right, now, it's time to do the, the um, gravity turn. And uh, head east because I'm seeing it's it is a necessity to head east and point for about 90 degrees in there and may the uh, main engine start good 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 looking good so far um, and you want to start your gravity turn in 10 kilometers and that is the suitable altitude and now you want to throttle up 100% uh, since you are now clear from the atmosphere and any flying debris rockets still tend to fail though keep that in mind guys and now it's not heating because if you do have this, it may tend to heat. Um, Alright, so far we're looking good. Uh, you want to check on your trajectory because it is it is key to check on your trajectory. No doubt. Alright, so trajectory is on a line. Um, you want to do a little bit of a vertical roll here. You want to make sure that you're facing upwards. Alright, so um, we're on the money here. We're on the money. Alright, and now you want to go um, face downwards a little. Pull yourself downwards until you're about 25 degrees as you reach your apoaphysis is starting to get a little wide. Wait till you get about 80 to 90 kilometers or 100, then you'll be in a good zone. Because 70 or 80, it requires a little bit of a break, air braking and a little bit of a extra maneuver. And now you could throttle up from now, throttle down from now on. This is the point where you throttle down and where you stop your boost. And now, what you want to do is to face your ship exactly in the equator where your program vector is underneath that and uh this is a sturdy aircraft so a sturdy spacecraft or a rocket um it may tend to move slow from time to time but don't bother um it'll eventually get a bit faster as you separate the main engine and uh just wait till you're at the right time here 
Maybe we might need to um, kind of lengthen our orbit, just face downwards by about 5 degrees in our um, gimbal. And you might want to burn a little, and as you will see, it may just kind of stabilize it, but increase a little. But yet again, it may um, slightly um, push over your um, orbit and make it a little, you know, wider. Alright, so you want to do it at the right, um, right angle, because if you have the wrong angle, it will screw you over. And uh, you want to make sure it stays in a reasonable um, aquaphysis level. I would say 80 kilometers, I guess. Alright, I think it's a very suitable level now, and uh, it's time to face the equator again. You can use the maneuver nodes and uh, face prograde, and you will pr it'll predict your um, final burn trajectory. And uh, look, everything seems to be alright. Um, without further ado, you might have a 7 kilometer separation. But uh, other than that, you are go. Boom. You are go. Alright, so... Um, I, f by hoping that you know the basics that you must face your gimbal, um, your, nav your nav ball towards the blue vector. That is your objective, and you will have that no T minus 20 seconds underneath your um, green line thing. It says that um, if you watch in HD, 820 meters per second. It's That's the like amount of thrust that you must put in order for you to complete your burn, and it also has the estimated time for, you, um, for your burn. It does perfectly, it does most of the job for you. And uh, T minus two, one, and burn. And I want you to burn that thing like you've never burned it before. And um, you may want to do some visual inspection time to time to make sure that your rocket doesn't kind of like fluke things up, because it will not be pleasant. And as you are speeding through the atmosphere, you might as well want to check your trajectory as well because it may switch over. And as you um, burn. You will lose fuel and this is when you separate and then you will move on and uh, I guess that was a little bit of a late separation so we will see if I can work things out there um, I will burn a little uh, forward down here right um, a little program all right so we kind of burned a little belated but uh, I don't see any problems so far all right so I wasn't paying attention to the amount of fuel that we have but uh shouldn't be um, a bad uh, problem for me hold on real quick Alright, we're doing good so far. Alright, alright. So, um, I'm gonna need to equalize our burn real quick as we uh, progress into space. Alright, so you wanna press V to uh, switch your camera angle. So, I kinda screwed up there when I um, forgot to pay attention to my fuel gauge and we kinda messed up there, but that's no worry. Uh, in case if that happens, if that really happens, I will show you guys what to do. And uh, I've been done this quite a while now. Um, delete that pro, your pro grade meter, and uh, you're still good for orbit. Look at your 71 kilometers. You may as well just uh, equalize yourself there. All right. So, um, all right. So as you reach, as you go up in orbit, um, you will notice that now you can't recover your vessel. That's because you are in space. You can only terminate it if something goes wrong, or when your crew dies. Of course, then you're pretty much done for. But we have to wait till apoaphysis until we can equalize our burn. Now, assuming that you know the basics of the fundamental basics of Kerbal Space Program, that you must burn prograde to even out your orbit if your periaphysis is low, is too low, and it'll it'll look like kind of like an oblong orbit shape, kind of like that, or like a small kind of. I wouldn't consider it elliptical yet, not yet. And uh, let's just wait till that thing evens out in between. There we go. That's basically evened out right there. And uh, see, boom, guys, you are in orbit. And now um, after this, you are pretty much go to do anything in your choice. And look by looking at the amount of fuel that we have, we have a lot of fuel. And I'm going to let um, I'm going to have this craft file up for download in Mediafire, and uh, it's going to be a nice one. But uh, yeah, look at this. This is a beauty, isn't it? And now you can um, open up your solar panels. Oh, and um, I will teach you guys how to have bind keys of how to open up a solar panel um, probably in the next episode or next two series episode, which will be in quite a while. All right, from now on, you are able to venture, um, according to the fuel gauge, you can venture all the way from the moon to Minmus and possibly Duna or Eve. By looking at this... Um, 
I think the bigger possibility is that you will be probably you probably would best end up ending up in Eve instead of Duna, considering the amount of fuel, or maybe none at all. Let us do the kind of the trajectory thing. All right, so we're orbiting eastwards, and we burn at the right time because Duna is at an all right position. I mean, not Eve. I mean, Eve is the right is an all right position. We're not that inclinated, are we? So we could just easily um, use the um, you know the maneuver meter, the maneuver mode meter, and we can just burn prograde all the way. And from now on, we can just like burn per um, perigee and all that. We can burn retro. Do whatever you want, basically. So let's see if we can get like an approach with Duna. <laughs> I mean Eve. Why do I keep calling Eve Duna? Alright. Eh, kinda there. Alright, so just kinda slow it down there. Boy, this is a long journey way here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, but uh, I'm not really focusing on that at this point. I'm just doing some random stuff. It takes a little while to get the maneuver nodes to uh, align up with the planets, but uh. I guess that'll do for now in this episode, and uh, until then, it is IPC Geekish signing off. Oh, just to let you know, um, before you leave this video, um, I would like to, I would like for you people who are watching, um, to comment on this video if you have the opportunity to. It it's a quick comment. Um, be constructive criticism. Ask me what you want to learn about next. If this has been, I know this has been a long video for some of you, but I'm giving you some sort of in-depth detail on how to specifically um, get into space into orbit and venture out of space because I want you guys to understand the concept of the game because rushing things in this game is not the thing that you want to be doing it takes time it takes experience and it takes a lot of stepping stones in order for you to achieve this and for me it may be a piece of cake but for others I could feel your struggle because I've been through that struggle before and um, that's about for the few couple hours of me playing the game, and I basically aced it <laughs> for the other days. Um, so anyways, yeah. You could do anything, really, from now on, and I will put the craft file for download. Don't forget about that. Comment on what you think. Like this video. Subscribe. And peace.